Hello world. Welcome back to Nix Nexus. In our journey to understand Linux, we have navigated the historical corridors of the operating systems in part 1. Now in part 2, our adventure takes us into the heart of Linux. But before that, if you haven't watched the part 1, please find its link above in the i button. I would highly recommend you to watch that video before continuing with this because it will help you to understand this whole series. Now let's begin with part 2. Linux or GNU slash Linux is the base of many open source operating system. Unlike Windows or Mac OS, GNU slash Linux is not a full operating system, but a set of programs and a kernel that many open source operating systems share. Let us first understand each of them separately. GNU or more commonly known as GNU is a huge collection of programs and utilities that was started by Richard Stallman in 1983 with the idea of developing a free Unix-like operating system because Unix was not publicly available for free and it was a property of AT&T. Stallman started developing programs and utilities necessary for the operating system but one key piece was missing, the kernel. So what is a kernel? The kernel is the heart of an operating system. It is a piece of software that interacts the closest with the hardware and the rest of the operating system sits on top of it. The kernel is responsible for low-level functions such as disk management, memory management, task management and so on. Now back to the main story. By 1991, in Finland, a student of Helsinki University named Linus Torvalds started developing a kernel for a Unix-like operating system. And in the following years, both projects started to interact and later join together to form a solid base that any operating system could use. The key here is that both the projects were free and open source. This means you are free to run the program for any purpose. You can study how the program works, you can change it to make it do what you want, you are free to redistribute the copy of original software as well as you are free to distribute the copy of modified version of the software. To better understand the free software movement, please listen to this TED talk by Richard Stallman. I am sharing the link in the description below. The approach Richard Stallman and Linus Torvald took in the development of GNU slash Linux is radically different to the examples we have seen and to what the industry was used to up to that point. Linux is distinguished by a set of principles which are deeply rooted in the value of freedom, collaboration and transparency. Making GNU slash Linux free was not only the right thing to do from its developer point of view, it is also an excellent choice for the software quality point of view as well. This is because thousands of developers and companies around the world choose to collaborate for free in order to improve the system. That is why GNU slash Linux distributions are known to be one of the most secure and stable operating systems out there. They are used in key spheres such as banking, finance, government and military. A big part of this is thanks to the open source model behind the GNU slash Linux project and that thousands of people around the world are able to review the code, fix the bugs and propose improvements constantly. As mentioned, GNU slash Linux serves as the base for many other operating systems. So whenever we use the term Linux or Linux operating system, we actually refers to the concept of distributions or distros which they are known by in the Linux world. These are complete packages of software built around the open source Linux kernel and the set of utilities. They can be thought as a flavor of Linux. That is why you cannot find much of a difference between certain distros, but others have distinction worth mentioning. So let's quickly review the most used distros in order to better understand this. Debian is an operating system that contains only free and open source software. Debian was started in 1993 and it is still going strong and releasing new versions. Debian is known mainly for its high amount of stability and security which makes it more conservative and slow when it comes to new releases. Ubuntu is the most widely used Linux distribution out there. It was created to take the core parts of Debian and improve on them more quickly. It also has a bigger focus on user friendliness and accessibility, which probably makes it the best option for someone coming from the Windows or Mac OS background. Ubuntu normally offers releases every 6 months with the more stable release every 2 years. Ubuntu is run by a company called Conanical. 
Mint is a distribution that has two different options in terms of choice. More popular version is built on top of Ubuntu and another version called LMDE or Linux Mint Debian Edition which is based on Debian as the name suggests. Linux Mint has all the features of Ubuntu as well as Debian but it is loved by many users because it includes media codecs and proprietary software that Ubuntu or Debian does not have out of the box. Fedora is a Linux distribution developed by the Fedora project. It strongly focuses on free software, therefore contains software distributed under various free and open source licenses and aims to be on the leading edge of open source technologies. Fedora is sponsored by a company called Red Hat, which is at the same time is owned by IBM. One interesting fact about Fedora is that as of May 2020, it is also a distribution of choice by Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux kernel. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is a commercial Linux distribution, also managed by the Red Hat company. The OS is used mainly for servers and corporations. It is based on the open source Fedora project but designed to be more stable out of the box. Point to note is that Red Hat uses trademark law to prevent Red Hat Enterprise Linux software from being redistributed. However, the core software is free and open source. Arch Linux is possibly the most hardcore Linux distribution out there. It is very lightweight, flexible and minimal. With Arch, you are completely in charge of configuring the system. The purpose of Arch is not to be mainstream. It is meant for the users that have a deep understanding of how a computer and an operating system works or at least they are interested in learning. Regarding GNU slash Linux's business model, both Linux and the Free Software Foundation, the organization behind GNU, are non-profit organizations. They operate mostly on donations, but Linux makes some of money through platinum, gold, silver and individual memberships. Companies like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Cisco, Huawei, IBM, Intel, Oracle and Samsung are all active contributors to the Linux Foundation because they all benefit from the knowledge and the technology generated by Linux. Regarding the distro, some of them are completely free and maintained by volunteers and others are maintained by companies and are free for particular users but commercialized for corporate users. Another business model used in Linux is free usage but charging for support and corporate use. Today, Linux runs on most of the servers worldwide. It is used on most of the supercomputers and also on most of the cell phones because Android is also using Linux kernel. On the desktop and laptop side of things, Linux usage is not nearly as widespread and that is probably because it is not widely available by default as Windows and it is nowhere near as marketed as Mac OS. Also, the learning curve necessary to implement and use Linux was a bit higher than for the other two options. But this situation has been changing lately as Linux distributions put more focus on user friendliness and now it is much easier than ever to get a computer or a laptop with Linux distribution installed by default. So as we conclude our journey into the heart of Linux, we have uncovered how, by the visionary idols of Richard Stallman to the collaborative work of Linus Torvalds, Linux became a testament to freedom, innovation and global collaboration. But in its essence, Linux is not just an operating system, it is a philosophy that resonates with millions of users worldwide. Linux's journey is not merely a technical one, but a plunge into a world where customization knows no bounds and collaboration knows no borders. So join us in the next installment as we unravel the intricacies of Linux's counterpart exploring the nuances that distinguishes Linux from Windows and Mac OS. The adventure continues and the best is yet to come. So stay curious, stay connected.